Hello, lovely people. Good evening. Can you hear me and can you see me? Oh yeah, I'm on camera now, so you should be able to see me. Can you hear me? We have sound. How's the balance? We're getting, uh, we're getting enough voice over the backing tracks. Too much voice over the backing tracks. <clears throat> I do seem a little pinker. I was adjusting the light. Let's see. Let me have a look. Let's see if I can fix that. Should I? Should I go? It's really hard to get the balance right, hey, particularly with the chroma given that I'm trying to cut the, the back out. <clears throat> For Christ's sake, just subscribe. Thank you very much. That's very, very nice of you. I appreciate the sub. And Atwolf has subbed again. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. Good evening, Bulbatross. Pink Tangent, lovely to see you as well. Atwolf, Benzies, your turn to heckle indeed, Benzies. <clears throat> Go, we got all the subs coming to the yards now. Here comes Eric. Thank you, Eric. And give greetings to you, Sisop. Archbishop, you're all lovely. It's good to see your faces again. I must apologize particularly to those uh, those people who support me in various ways that it has been a long time since I did this. In fact, I was just checking the history of the Git repo and uh, the last stream was on the 17th of June. So that's a long time ago. My bad, my bad. But thanks for joining in. Uh, it's good to see the regular faces and the not so regular faces. Lockifer, sorry, I didn't see you sneak in there. Thanks for joining in. <clears throat> now, I've got a few things to talk about today. Um, lots going on in life, which is why I've been very, very busy. Busy work-wise, that's what's kept me away mostly. Um, it's been hard to find the energy of an evening to to get the streams going on. But before we continue, make sure you have your beverage of choice. Mine tonight is Dong Ding Oolong. In fact, I haven't had one of these for a couple of weeks. Um, a bit strange. Usually I have them on stream, so maybe that's why. <clears throat> for Christ's sake, you're a legend. Thank you very much again for the sub and to everybody else who continues to support me. That's very, very nice. Yeah, love a Oolong. I'm super, super impressed with this Oolong. It's, I've never had a bad one when I brew it properly. So anyway, look, I hope you're all keeping well. It's been a pretty crazy time of life. Uh, for those of you in Australia, are probably fully aware of how messed up things are down in Victoria at the moment, thanks to the outbreaks. Although relatively speaking, it's nowhere near as bad as most other areas of the planet, which have the, the very, very high numbers of coronavirus uh, infections, which is really sad. But um, we had a case today where uh, some inconsiderate jerks decided to go down to Melbourne, come back to Brisbane via Sydney, go to work at a school and go out drinking in South Bank and all of a sudden they've tested positive for COVID-19. So we could end up with a horrible outbreak. Yeah. A bit crap, hey? <clears throat> yes, well, it's fair to say, for Christ's sake, that uh, if anything is going wrong in Victoria, it's going to be Outwolf's fault, let's be fair. And if it's not, it's, uh, it's probably him in cahoots with Pink Tangent that's causing all the issues. Anyway, I hope you have your tea. I'm going to avoid the chocolate again this evening. I'm trying to be good. G'day, Tom. Nice to see you again, mate. <clears throat> You'll be joining with the chocolate. <laughs> I know. Sorry, Eric. Whoops. Rip. Chamomile. Honey and vanilla. Oh, I don't think I've tried that. I'm not a fan of chamomile tea, I have to say. Some people say chamomile, but uh, I'm not... <clears throat> Yes, thank you for sharing that story out, Wolf. Yeah, just just self-centered pricks. So, so um, yeah, crazy, crazy town. Anyway, uh, it had been such a long time since we had caught up. Uh, I had to go through and figure out what it was we were doing last. Hey, Sisto, welcome. <clears throat> yeah, Sisto's over in uh, in Perth. Well away from all the mess, although people are fighting to open the borders to WA as well, aren't they? I heard that. Someone's taking someone to court about that. <laughs> I like that, Archbishop. That's funny. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> um, so what we were doing, we were in the middle of implementing packet pivots from memory. And um, we hit this issue where when I tried to just wrap the packets around the stream version of name pipes, 
things didn't work. They were kind of working in the, the other fashion with the async callbacks and whatnot. And um, yeah, we tried to sort of just funnel it back into the way that we were already reading packets out and that really didn't go so well. So that was a little bit upsetting. Um, and at the end of the stream, I just went, fuck it, and, uh, and bailed. Um, so yeah, we're going to have to fight our way through that today. Now, I have done some reading on what's going on. It would appear that um, the .NET abstraction doesn't like the idea of, excuse me, reading and writing to and from the same stream, use uh, name pipe, using the stream interface on separate threads. And you've got to have blocking and whatnot going on. So I think what I'm going to have to do is go back to the um, asynchronous programming method and basically just keep reading the packets off in that manner. Um, and writing the packets in the same manner because I think that will continue to work. But it does mean that we can't just say, hey, let's create an instance of a packet, wrap it up um, from the stream and it'll just read stuff. So yeah, unfortunately, we're going to have to do a little bit more work, which might mean that we're going to bleed some more stuff down into the packet itself, um, packet class, because it needs to know how to read from something other than the stream. Hey, civilized. Nice to see you. How's it going? Nougat tea. Over in the UK, they say nugget. Not nougat. But over here, they say nougat. It's like yogurt and yogurt. Crazy. <clears throat> anyway, let us um, jump over there. And we'll fire up the end. Righto. So I have fired up the listeners and all that sort of stuff again to get us back to where we were to make sure that everything works. And this was the mess that we were constructing last time. So I should be able to run this and we should end up with a session. So this should all still work. <clears throat> okay, so that's fine. Um, the bit that we got to here was we were waiting to read things back off the wire when a, a SMB session had connected, staged itself, and then was starting to shuffle data back and forth. <clears throat> so that's kind of where we're at. Um, my feeling is that we're just going to have to revamp a good bunch of what we've got written here um, because we can't just wrap things in readers and have things go. Now you see this line of code here, we've got this new packet and we just pass in the reader. So this, this I believe is what the problem is going to be. So at the moment, the, the packet class really only knows how to read off a binary reader. And you can see there's a lot of logic here for reading the content of the um, header. So what I think we're gonna have to do is do something similar to this, but actually pass in um, something else and that may well be you know a reference to an abstract thing that can read from a um something in a asynchronous fashion um and so what i'm thinking of doing is actually not just having a packet but creating a packet header class and a packet header knows how to read from um the stream and from the apm and that allows us to read the packet header, parse it, read the rest of the packet body in and not actually go through the decryption process that you have to actually go through with the packet. Because remember when we're dealing with uh, packets that are encrypted at either end of our pivot, we don't really know what the contents are because we don't know the keys. Um, so again, to go back to where we were, if I run this and then, I think I had this in the history. I did test this just before. Okay. Let's kick pivot off. And then when we're on this machine, we should be able to go. That's uh, this pipe, so I might move these other ones out of the way. If we run this one, we can see we actually got to the point where it's staged, um, or is in the process of staging, <coughs> and um, we're at the point where we're going, okay, we know we've got a, an SMB pivot come in and now we want to sit there and wait for data to come off the wire and we're 
basically at this stage, we block. Nothing happens. Does everyone remember this? I wanted to forget about it. But it is what it is. So what we may begin with is um, just having something in here that we know is um, is going to behave. <clears throat> and then once it behaves, we can probably um, we can probably just take the bits and pieces of this that are sort of packet specific and abstract that back into the packet class. Okay, so we've got this named pipe service stream. That's right. And so off this, we basically want to do the, the APM, okay? Now, that means we've got to get rid of... What are we going to get rid of? We can leave the writing the way that we were doing it. Although we should probably change the write. Instead of using a new thread, we can just use the APM. So let's do this. This.server.begin write. And so we want to go pass in the data at zero, data.length. <clears throat> An async callback, which will be, um, we'll call it data written, and we'll create that in just a minute. And the state we don't really care too much about um, because we know everything that, that we need to know at this point. Um, we could pass the data buffer in, I guess, but I don't think it's really worth doing that. So we want to go private void data written by a sync result. Um, we'll just call it result. And then here we need to go this.server.end right and pass in result. And that's all I'm going to do for now, just to move away from using using the streams. Yeah. Ah, oh, is that real? Is that who you are? So I had no idea who you were, for Christ's sake, but now I do. How you doing, mate? Have you got dad sitting beside you? <clears throat> okay, so instead of doing this, we are going to have to read what is effectively the full size of the packet, right? <clears throat> so I'm going to create a packet header buffer, okay? Because the packet header is the thing that we need to read off the wire first. So we're going to go re read async we are kind of dealing with packets as a whole. So um, maybe what we should do instead of calling this read async, we can say um, read packet async. Now we don't actually need threads here anymore because the APM should be able to deal with this for us. Um, and then we can go read async, which we'll just use the APM. Okay, so we can get rid of that, we can get rid of that, we can get rid of that. Uh, let's also get rid of, we don't need this, we don't need this, we don't need this. Okay. Getting there. Excellent, mate. That's good to hear. Got to say, I'm impressed that uh, I haven't had much trolling from Benzies and he's been on stream for 10 minutes already. So yeah, he's going to have to level up his game. I'm pretty sure that it took just a few minutes before I started trolling him on his stream last night. What's up, Binchuk? Good to see you, mate. <clears throat> New byte. Now, we need to allocate enough space for a packet header. Um, now, the packet header, I think, is 32 bytes. Pretty sure it's 32. Yeah, we have one, two, three, four, lots of four. Yeah, 32. So, have a look at the packet here. We can see the header has... <clears throat> We have the XOR flag, which is four bytes. We have the encryption flags, which is four bytes. Uh, we have the 16 byte GUID. And we have four bytes for the packet type and four bytes for the packet body length. No. Yeah, so one, two, three. Do we have any constants lying around that will tell us this? Here we go, header size. Yeah, there you go. Right, we can make that public for now, just to get us going. 
Okay, so if we go new byte packet dot header size. All right, so that's effectively what we want to read. <clears throat> When's the climbing stream? Great question. I am going to consider doing that. Um, I think I'm going to have to reevaluate what I've got set up camera wise, but I'm pretty sure I've got all all the bits that I need, and um, I should be able to stream it straight from the garage where the climbing is. But when I get outside, that's when it's it's going to be different. I'm actually going out climbing tomorrow, but uh, I'm not going to be able to stream it. Rolled in with apple pie and tea. Oh yeah, that sounds pretty good. Notepad plus plus is a superior editor. <laughs> Dude, come on, you can do better than that. <laughs> ah, that's funny. <clears throat> All right, um, so what we're going to do here is nano bust. We're just gonna kick off the APM and we're gonna pass in the, the buffer, okay? So we're just gonna go this.server.readAsync. async. Oh, sorry, begin read, begin read. We'll pass in the packet header. Is this what we want to do? Yeah, we want to pass in the packet header. Uh, maybe we should, instead of instead of doing this, we should make it a memory stream. That would make more sense. Because if we have a memory stream, then we know that we can read the first however many bytes in as part of the header. And until we have that many bytes, then we can't do the rest. Um, but we can kind of associate the logic of, the, the, of keeping track of where we're at inside the memory stream um, just by... Oh, actually, can we? Yeah. Because we want to know, we've got to read the header and then we've got to read the rest. And there's kind of effectively two lengths worth of things that we need to, to do. Um, well, let's see how we go. Um, let's let's undo that. We're going to start with whatever the, the header is. Okay, so we'll start packet header at zero. Um, how many do we want? We want um, packet header, oops, length. Now remember, we're not necessarily going to get what we're requesting when we first do this. Um, what we may end up having to do is instead of like read async, we'll have to do a read header async and then read body, body async. I think that's probably what we're gonna have to do. <clears throat> Okay, GoPro. Uh, my son's got a GoPro. Hotspot RTMP server and go climb. <laughs> got a new toy coming as well. I wonder if you can live stream from a drone. That would be cool. Uh, okay, so we call begin read and then we need to pass in the. Um, Um, we need to pass in the packet header because we need a reference to the buffer that we're going to be reading from. Uh, and then, sorry, that's not where that goes. That's the last parameter. We're going to have to go data, we'll just call it data, data red. And we'll probably rename this. Um, let's just comment that out for now. So that means we're going to get a callback. Private void data red. I mean, red and read is a little bit confusing, isn't it? Putting a drone on the internet, what could go wrong? <laughs> OJ, when are you coming to ACT so we can climb? That's a great question, mate. I think it's going to take another few months before I can get away. Um, coronavirus is really causing all kinds of strife. But trust me, my friend, as soon as I can, I will be there with bells on. Trust me. <clears throat> okay, so here we're going to go this.server.endread and we're going to go result. This should give us the bytes read, okay? And that should tell us how many, how many bytes actually came off the stream at that time. Now, that's really only useful for us when it comes to error codes because we're going to be using the internal packet to keep track of how many bytes have actually been... Oh, actually, no, we can't do that, can we? Because we don't actually have a pointer into the buffer to tell us how much we've read. Interesting, hey? 
So we may need to have a little a little helper. And this is where the, the idea of a packet header might make sense. So let's do that here. Let's go um, private class packet header. <clears throat> and we may shift this. Um, inside the constructor, we'll go this dot um, buffer equals new byte packet dot header size. This dot, um, we could call it offset. It starts at zero. And that tells us how far we are basically off. Maybe we should call it position. That would be a little bit more intuitive. Let's create a field for both of these. Um, no. Okay. <clears throat> so here we want to be able to do the async reading inside this. In fact, maybe what we should do is make these properties so that they can be manipulated. I think that's probably something that makes a little bit more sense. Because we're really only dealing with it. It's, it's technically only a structure. But we'll keep it as a class for now. So let's create properties for those two things. And uh, just leave those as initialized elements. Why are you whinging? Is that because it's not used? All right, we'll make it public then. Okay, so in here, instead of having a packet header, which is a byte array, we're going to have a new packet header. And then we are going to call it, instead of packet header.length, we're going to have packet header.buffer.length. Okay, so where we've got read async, I'm going to rename that to read header async. Just to make that very clear. Um, we're going to read packet header dot buffer. Ask any questions, by the way. It's been a while since we've done this. Oh, why did they remove the unicorn one? <clears throat> Um, header data received. Let's do that. So that gives us an idea then of uh, how many bytes we've received. Um, and we should be able to update the position. So if bytes red is greater than zero. Now we do need to put exception hand. Now, now, Sisto, there is a line here, my friend, and that is well and truly stepping over it. All right, so we'll go, um, let's do this. Uh, packet header equals, my tunes died for a sec. Result dot async state. Okay, so if we've read some bytes then we're gonna go packet header dot position. We'll add the bytes read to that position. So that will allow us to Hang on. Why can't I update that? Oh, it's only private. Let's fix that. We'll leave the buffer as a private set though. Okay, so we can update the position and then we need to say, hey, have we read enough data off the wire? Um, and if so, then um, how many more bytes do we actually need to read? Pretty sure I can do the same thing in bash in one line. I would dread to think what that looks like. Uh, okay, so once we've read that information, um, we want to make sure that we're reading the full 32 bytes and then we need to parse that. Okay? So what we need to do is go if packet header basket. Now what's going on with these tunes? Don't know what's going on. Should, shouldn't be like that. Packet header dot position is less than packet header so I can 
really isn't liking the tunes, is it? Um, dot buffer dot length. Then basically what we need to do is another read async, which basically is going to be the same as this. Read packet buffer. Offset is going to be packet header dot position. And then what we might do is go bytes left. And we can go bar bytes left equals that. And then instead of this, we go bytes left. And then we just rinse repeat. <clears throat> so we're expecting more bytes. Is that the right value? Ah, uh, hang on, we need position. I did something stupid there, didn't I? Um, so that's how many bytes left. If bytes left is greater than zero, then we need to read again. I'm getting annoyed with this stopping and starting of the songs. We might have to change albums or something. Okay, so that means we're effectively done. And uh, I'm going to kill the songs for a minute. Or maybe I should just change albums. Hang on. I don't think this is going to make a difference, but we'll see. Sorry about that. I blame Benzies. It's got to be Benzies. He's hacking my musics after his uh, shenanigans on stream last night. It's got to be that, right? It's the only logical explanation. All right. So once we have, if we still have bytes to read, then we need to go ahead and pull more bytes off the wire. Okay, so what I want to do before I do anything else is I want to make sure that what we're doing here actually makes sense. Okay, so I'm going to kick off a session. Spin up a listener. And let's pivot to glory. Okay, so we're kicking off um, begin read and we should hopefully see some data come in at some point. Okay, that's not good. Hmm. Maybe it's because we're doing like an async async read and an async write. So maybe we actually need to do a forced write. So let's just do this for a minute. Because we were doing writing directly before. We don't need to pass in anything else. We just need to say, throw that down the neck. And then maybe what we need to do while we're we're doing the reading and writing thing, maybe we need to put a lock in place. And then when a read or when a when a read is supposed to happen, I wonder if we can query to see if there is any data available on the port. Yeah, I, no, I'm not going to mutex. I'll use locks. Oh, actually, I may have to use a mutex, actually. It's a bit upsetting, isn't it, really? Um, let me just kill that pipe processor. Oh, there's two of them. And... Let's do that again, and let's see what happens this time. That's really interesting, isn't it? This displays it. Yeah, I know. Trust me, I'm not a fan either. I get the feeling we're going to end up doing some horrible hackery to make this work. Which I'm not a fan of at all. Shouldn't be this hard, right? I should be able to do async reads and writes. Okay, so we're going to write. And what did that... That should just return the bytes that have been read. Oh, hang on. What were we writing? 
All right, I'm just going to pause the music for a bit because the starting and stopping is driving me a bit insane. I'm sorry. All you're going to have to do is put up with the sound of my voice. I know that's a little bit upsetting, but um, sorry. <laughs> okay, what does established session do? I don't remember what we, we did with established session. Oh, so that's just saying write the packet. Yeah. Okay. So we do do a a write basically to um, establish mature because this mem stream here is the stager information, right? Yeah, I want to <laughs> unsub. I know, rip, hey? Wilbertross is going full Karen. No, you genuinely do not want me to sing you a song. <laughs> I will, and it will ruin your nights. <clears throat> and I am not sorry. All right, so something quirky is going on here because I'm pretty sure that we didn't have this problem last time. Break out the tablet and draw a song. That's a nifty idea. Okay. Let's just establish this again. And, okay, so I want to make sure that we get here and I want to make sure that we get to here. So we should do two writes and then we should attempt to do a read. And at that stage, we should be able to see, I don't know whether we should have debug output appear here because we've got a debug version of Meterp sitting on disk. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so let's see what goes on now. Okay, so we're about to send the stage. Which means magic should happen when that actually gets written. And then we write the packet. Someone just sub. Rasta Mouse has subbed. Thank you, Rasta. All right, so something quirky is going on because good to see you. Ah, here we go. Look at this core channel EOS. Oh, that's come from here, not from our actual Meterp payload. Um, so that's pretty interesting. Why are we not seeing any info come out? I would have expected at least this callback to get hit here because at some point once oh actually maybe that's the maybe that's the problem maybe we need to make um hmm, hmm. While I'm sitting here thinking in my uncomfortable silence, let's put the tunes back on. Um. Let's not do the established session thing. We kind of have to, don't we? I mean, once we've created the session, it should be sitting there ready to go. I can see you're getting the server to both write and read what's on the other end exactly. The um, On the other end is an instance of Meterp that should be running. Um, I actually thought that I had debug binaries for Meterp sitting here ready to go. Um, but clearly I do not, which is a little bit upsetting. And I'm not going to build them on stream because that's really not a lot of fun. Um, although I'm pretty sure I did it last time, didn't I? Hmm. Sorry, I'm just thinking about what I should do. Um. Maybe I should just... Oh, we've got Metasploit Payload sitting here. So we did have it. Okay, so... 
One sec. Metasploit payloads. Gah. I've never had this many issues with the uh, the music in the past. It's pretty upsetting, to be honest. Um, this stuff looks out of date, doesn't it? Or maybe it's just me that thinks it's out of date. But no, it's, it's definitely out of date. There's no common it should be in. Let's open one of these. Common should be sitting... Side here, let's open a containing folder. Okay. Yep, okay. I don't know which version of um, Minnesota payloads I've actually got here. We should probably have a look. Oops. Oh, I don't have Git installed on here. Far out. It's all going to shit. Um, just give me a minute. I want to make sure that I am utilizing the correct version of things. God, this jittering is driving me insane. Yeah, okay, so we're still using strings. So that's all right. Let's just build this. Um, we're going to build the 64-bit release. This is really painful. I wonder why Monster Cat is being such a pain. I have no idea why. Okay, so rebuilding these DLLs with debug stuff baked in because I want to be able to see whether or not uh, Metasploit is being is is serving up the the debug payload of Metserve and that Metserve is actually getting staged and that we can actually see it. That's the kicker. <clears throat> so that's why I wanted this, this thing running here. As you can see, leaving this thing running on a desktop machine, man, you wouldn't believe the kind of stuff that gets spat out in the debug view. It's really quite interesting. <sighs> OJ, I just sent you the Microsoft keys. OJ, I just sent you the Microsoft keys. Did you did? Okay, um, let's just copy over lay binary code metasploit framework data metaplor. You can see we've got some DLLs sitting here. So I'm just going to move all of the DLLs into there so that they're out of the way. Um, and let's copy host code, metasploit payloads, seam interpreter output star.dll. No, that doesn't make sense. It's not there. It's not there, guys. We won't find it there. I'm going to have to copy them manually because they are in code, metasploit payloads, C interpreter, output. Here's where they are. Let's make sure we've only just built these now, the 64-bit ones at least. So these puppies are the ones that we need. So I'm going to go via the usual. Just bear with me. If I missed something here. Oh yeah, yeah I have. don't have that in here. So instead I need to copy it into a folder that we know is going to work 
bear with me people this won't take long uh, scratch stream yeah okay so instead we'll copy uh, what was it stream I oh, know scratch stream interpreter debug star dot dll hooray okay let's move that over there now this time we should hopefully see something stage when it's done you should see it all appear in here okay let's just kill off any existing pipes that are currently running oh would you look at that it failed now because it's broken bytes rate will be zero okay it's interesting though it's 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 kind of supposedly doing its thing burg omg hello yeah sorry the music for some reason is just being horrible horrible this evening and it's making me sad <clears throat> so i decided to turn it off and you're afraid you're stuck with my voice and some people are stupid enough to make requests for things like singing probably not what you want so i think i'll uh, save you the pain and not do that um, did i skip that off no why didn't that do anything go Run, run. Ah, I don't have a session. That'd be why. Why don't I have a session? Okay, there's weird stuff happening, guys. One, did my IP address change? Does need more sounds of <laughs> spring keyboard. Okay, so let's quickly duck in here. So 192.168.146.138, that's exactly what I would expect to see. I don't know what's going on. I'm not gonna lie, I don't know. Computers horrible I am at a loss one two dot one six eight dot one four six dot one three it, it is eight Man, uh oh, someone's gifting subs again. And of all the times too, when there's literally busted music and I can't even get a session working. <clears throat> it's very, very strange. We're we using TCP stage test. Thank you very much for the gifting of the subs, whoever you are. <laughs> Hey, Gumbus, how you going, mate? 4444, connect. Why are you not working? Okay. Are we connected? Yes. Full stage, read something. I'm so confused. What have I done that's different? Oh, I know. I know. Move. No. 
star.net star.dll back to here. I moved the sim links. Duh. So remember, um, we have, I have it so that when I build on my development machine, I drop the output to a certain location and there are sim links across my virtual machines so that the latest version of the binaries can be shipped. That's what I should rename this, Archbishop, is I fumble, fumble with computers. I royally messed that up. But now, we should see something happen. There we go. There we go. I knew that. Okay. I knew that. Leave me alone. Don't tease me. <laughs> I'm so dumb. Seriously. Sorry about that. That was painful, wasn't it? Okay, so what I would like to see here is when I run this pipe, um, I think I just mucked something up here as well. Yep. Sorry about that. We want to see it spit out a bunch of stuff in here. And it's not. Hmm. Okay, so this is actually a good thing. Um, and I think we're definitely making 64-bit payload. We've got a 64-bit runner. And that was... Oh... I've just had a moment of clarity. I think I know what's going on. Let me just check something. Okay, so that is definitely... Sixty-four bit. I'm just going to create a new one of these because I'm wondering if this, for some reason, is is not doing what we want it to do. Maybe it's something we need to regenerate. So we want to go NSF Venom. Venom. Payload, Windows X64, uh, Metapreter, named, reverse, named, pipe. Um, pipe name equals NSF X64 as per our other configuration. Pipe host is going to be... 192.168.146.130 Yep, format exe output to stream stream net pipe 64.exe Oh, did I? Oh, I did too. <laughs> Thank you. Isn't it funny how the brain works? See, this is why I have you lovely people here to hold my hands. It's to prevent me from doing stupid stuff like that. Stream net pipe 64. Okay, no excuses with the payloads this time, right? <clears throat> okay, let's spin up our listener again and let's see what happens <laughs> yep 
You were going to let me fail. Thanks, Rasta. Get me right in the feels, bro. All right. Kick off the pivot. And let's see if we actually do something this time. I'm going to, I'm, I'm assuming not. It's a little bit upsetting. Okay, so let's just duck in here. So we're going to be writing. Well, isn't that interesting? Look at that. There's no, we're not, we're not staging anything. What have we done? And by we, I mean you. So stage. That's really interesting. So stage data. Mem stream. Stage data mem. So we write mem stream is two array. Ah, uh, hang on a minute. Did I accidentally revert something really important? I'm thinking we did. Yeah. So we need to be able to go uh, writer dot write hang on. So we need to put in stage data dot length. Remember we need to send the length first and then we need to write writer dot write stage data we went through this last time didn't we all right this eerie silence is scary let's try buffering music again okay so we need to write i don't know where this went to be honest we need to write the length then we need to write the actual stage and then we send that down the wire So build, that's bizarre. Oh, it's, it's, uh, oh, it's driving me insane. I've never had these issues with this streaming stuff. I'm tempted to just like spin up an old stream or something in the background that has consistent music. Yeah, it's crazy, isn't it? Don't know what's going on. What I should do is just get a series of tunes as a backup and I can have that. It's because it isn't the Doom soundtrack. <laughs> I would actually spin up something like Guy Baroni and have that going, but YouTube will block the videos and saying that I'm pirating music, which is the whole reason I have the Monster Cat Gold subscription in the first place, which is a little bit frustrating. Anyway, I'm confident we're going to get some progress now. So let's um, spin up the pivot and actually send some data this time. So, in so, I'm glad I stepped into this. We've just actually sent some data now. Hey, we're getting some data out. 32 bytes. Bytes left is zero. Hey, we've actually got a packet header. Crazy. Crazy. Things be be crazy, yo. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's interesting, isn't it? That means we should some see you go. Look at that. We got we got activity. Things have staged. <laughs> hey Rasta, look. You know, I know you came here for the serious technical education, but everyone's going to walk away here knowing that in order for a stager to be run, um, sorry, a stage to be run, you actually have to send the stage. Who knew? What's surprising though is why that code wasn't there because we 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 messed this up. I messed this up on the last stream. So very strange, very very strange. Anyway, the good thing is that we should be able to read information out of the packet header now. And in order to do that, I'm going to put some abstractions in. Um, so we're going to go public 
Um, what are we looking for? We're going to have int length. Yeah, we'll call it length. And this is going to be a getter. Now, the assumption here is that we're not going to call length until we know that we actually have enough space um, in the packet. Um, but what we need to do before we do that is do the XORing, like what we were doing in here. Uh, where are we? So there's this XOR bytes. So what I think I'm going to do here actually is, is add an extension um, that will allow you to say, I want this array to be XORed. So let's do that. Let's take that out and we'll stick this in the extensions wherever that was. We've got a bunch of extensions in here. Um, let's create a new one. This is going to be a byte array extension. We're going to create a new class called byte array extensions. And I'm just going to drop this function in here. But before I continue, we need to make sure that we don't forget to share this across the, um, the other solutions. So we want to go add uh, existing item. We need to locate that under netserve 35 extensions, byte array extensions, add as a link. Okay, so now that's available in both cases. So here what we want to do is a public sealed, oh, is it sta yeah, static, public static class and then we need a public void, we'll just call it XOR because this is going to be a this byte array bytes, or I should call it target and then get rid of that, public static void, okay. So that means we can get rid of this custom implementation. <clears throat> and then when it says XOR bytes, what we actually want to do is go header dot XOR XOR key. So that makes that a little bit nicer. All right? Um, and here we can do exactly the same thing. Packet body dot XOR. Exorky. Reads a little bit nicer, to be honest. Um, OX Martin, hello. Welcome to the stream. Sorry about the uh, radio silence with the music. We've been having some very strange issues with uh, the Monster Cat Gold subscription. Um, I'm really not sure why it's doing what it's doing, but it is. And um, here we are. So I've, I've killed it because of the horrible buffering issues. Okay, so let's do... Once we've got our buffer filled up um <laughs> yeah gone boss that was uh, suggested by sysop earlier on and the answer is hell no um that ain't that ain't happening bro that just ain't happening public um void so because we've got a packet that's big enough now i mean the other way that we could do it is actually push this information into the packet header so we could actually do this a named pipe service stream and we could take the um the data out the problem is that once we do this we're kind of outside of the context of the header and we would need a callback yeah let's not do that let's not do that i'm over engineering let's just do this we'll call it prepare because that's pretty much what it's doing, but we will refactor this afterwards. Um, so we're going to do this. We are going to go. Uh, this dot XOR key equals new byte four, because we know it is a four byte XOR key. Um, and we're just going to go array dot copy source array is this dot buffer destination array is this dot xor key and it's going to be this dot xor key dot length and that's going to be a field 
okay, so once we've prepared it, um, we know that we can pull the XOR key out and then we can just do this.buffer.xor this.xor key. We actually don't need to make that a field then, do we? Let's just make it temporary. Oops. And the silence is a bit spooky, isn't it? <laughs> it feels feels very strange not having a backing track. Field versus property discuss. Oh well. Fields internal. Property is to be read externally. Yeah. Should pretty much be that simple, would you agree? No? <clears throat> right, so length. Yes, 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 yes. So we have a bunch of helper methods, but you can also read public fields too. Yes, yes, I know, I know. I can see where this is going and I am not playing your game. Okay, I am not playing your game, Rasta Mouse. You can have that religious argument by yourself. I need to focus. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so the packet length we know is sitting... Uh, what is this? Basically the last four bytes, yeah? So this dot buffer, we want to be able to sl effectively slice it. Um, we want to take a chunk of the array and read it as an integer. Now, what do we do inside our um, binary reader extension, we have a read D word, which does this. So we basically need to take a, we need to read integers straight out of the byte array. So maybe we, we can use, is it the byte, byte converter? Yeah, let's have a look here. Well, no, it's not byte converter, it's bit converter, isn't it? Okay, so we want to go to int 32 and we want that to be a, what is it? The start index is going to be this.buffer.length minus four. Has it got a uint 32? No. Okay, so that gives us the integer and then there is no given value corresponds to the required formal parameter start index. Ah, oh, I've got to give it the buffer as well. Yeah, stop buffer. Okay, so we get the int, and then we need to basically do this. Oops. Okay, so let's grab that and stick it in there. going to be, what does this return? Network host order should return an int. It should be a uint32 though, right? Why is this complaining? It's because we need a uint. Okay. Two uint32. So that should actually give us the length of the packet, right? Okay, so once we reach here, else, um, this means the header has been received. Let's receive the body of the packet next. Right, we will actually need to keep things, um, both. we'll need to keep the header and the, the body, and we'll amalgamate these in something after the fact. Um, so let's have a squeeze. Maybe what we, once we've got a packet header, we need to create, what do we need to create? We need to create like a, a buffer that contains both, but I'm not, I'm not gonna go there just yet. Um, Hmm. 
I'm trying really hard to not get ahead of myself and let this evolve in a way that actually makes sense. But right now we just want to get this thing working. We're already an hour in and I've got to keep this down to an hour and a half tonight because um, I have other work that I need to do before I take off. So let's just get to a point where we know that we can actually read packets back and forth and then maybe on our next stream we'll refactor this to be a little bit more sane because it's pretty ugly as it currently stands, which is a little bit upsetting. Uh, okay, so now what we want to do is we want public class packet body. Now when we create a packet body, which again we will refactor another time, we're going to give it the packet header. Okay, and we'll initialize a field. Okay. Um, so once we've read the whole header, we can just do this. This dot header dot prepare. We can say, hey, get ready to read the rest of the body. And then we can say this dot buffer. We'll make this a property equals new byte. And we need this dot header dot length. Instead of calling it length, I'm going to call it body length. And let's make that a property for now. So there's one case raster which I think is really important is with properties you can limit what's been um, written. So you can't, you can stop things from being overwritten if they're a property, you can't do that if it's a field. So there, are, I mean, there are cases that are good for both, you know. Um, okay, let's move. I like to keep the properties above. Okay, so once we've got that, um, we've got our buffer ready to go. And we also need a position. So let's do copy pasta. And we'll stick that here. Um, and let's plonk the position there at zero. Okay, now we effectively need to do exactly the same thing. Um, the only difference is that we need, we need to know that um, we are reading the body. Now for now, all I'm going to do is I'm gonna copy and paste. Yes, I know it's terrible. Um, I'm gonna call this body data received. Uh, it's not packet body, is that what I was calling it? Yeah, packet body. Okay, and I'm gonna do the same thing here. And we will refactor this into something that's a little nicer to use. Okay, so here's where we're gonna loop and we're gonna keep reading. So at this stage, we are, we now have a full packet. All right, so when we get to this stage, we know that the entire packet has been read off the wire. Um, otherwise, we need to loop, okay? So, head has been received. We then need to go var packet body equals new packet body. We're gonna pass in um, the packet header. And then we're going to do a begin read of the packet body's buffer. Uh, we know that we want, um, what are we looking for? Packet body dot length. No, buffer dot length. We are starting at zero. So let's make that clear here. Um, we're not doing header data received. We are doing body and we're passing in packet body. So we're kind of doing this repeated loop read of the um, header. And then once we've got a full header, we, we have a look at the content of the header. And then from there, um, we've already solved that problem. Thanks, Tom. But we, it, it doesn't do, if you pass in a, which one is it? An unsigned um, int 32, it casts it to a 64-bit int. We had that problem last time, right? But um, 
here you can see, what are we doing? We are casting it back down to a uint32, so we're not returning the full bytes. But with the good thing is we're not actually going in the other direction into a byte array, and that was what was biting us before. We're still dealing with um, with integer, uh, with uh, byte arrays to integers, so we should be okay. Yeah, no, no dramas at all, man. That's that's what we're here for. Okay, so um, kill this pipe 64 off. So let me just bounce this around again. We start by reading the header. We loop until we get to the point where we don't have any bytes left to read, at which point we go and create a packet body. Um, and then we try and loop and read the packet body. So let's put this in place here. <clears throat> Let's run it. Kick off the pivot and hope that something great happens. Hmm. That's not good, is it? <laughs> what did I do? So we added the pivot. Have I not? I've done something stupid. Oh, hang on. I know. I know. It's got to make sure it, the build failed. <laughs> Packet data dot XOR with the we can just generate a key. There we go. If all else fails, read the build log. See you, Pink Tangent. Thank you for coming on. It's good to see you. Good luck with your work and with the kiddos. Okay. I'm so disappointed about the fact that the music is really not behaving like it should. Hey, here we go. Okay. So we begin the read. And here we go. We have some bytes. Uh, where are we? Yeah. Oh, have I got a new follower? Gazomo has hosted me with 93 viewers. Wow. Wow. Crazy. Greetings, everyone. Now I feel like I'm gonna to have to put the music back on and even if it's stuttering because no one wants to hear the radio silence. That's pretty scary. Orange juice. Love me some orange juice. Okay, um, thanks to the person who's hosted the, uh, the stream. Um, that's a pretty intimidating number of people to just magically appear. Anyway. Forgive me if the Monster Cat sub seems to be buffering constantly. It's driving me a little bit insane this evening. All right, so create a new packet body instance. Prepare it. Copy the XOR key out, which should be on zero. Yep, that looks good. And then from here, these should be set to zero if this actually does what we want it to do. Ugh. Yeah, the first X number of bytes. Here we go. That should be, what is that? That should be the packet length starting just there. Is that right? I don't think it is, to be honest. Body length is zero. That's definitely wrong. Maybe, um, maybe that's the type. Maybe we're actually reading the type. That's not accurate. So, man, we've got a bunch of followers joining in. Thank you for the follows. Who have we got? Kieran Mack. I am a grub. <laughs> I am grub. Sisos Master. Appreciate everyone who has chimed in with a follow. That's very kind of you. So, yeah, this is definitely not accurate. This is not right. The packet header, the last four bytes should definitely include the length. So, see how we're sending length of 163? What's 163 in um, hex? 
Anyone? A3. We didn't even see a bite that closely resembled A3 here, did we? Um, header. Thirty-one. Now I was expecting all of these things here to be null because we have we don't have encryption. Um, we overwrote the XOR key with the current XOR key, which is basically XORing with itself, resulting in zero. Um, so that's the first one, two, three, four, five, twenty bytes. Twenty-four bytes is all zero. Straight after that, you've got the packet type, and then the length. Let me just make sure that's right. Quickly look at the packet itself. Okay, so yeah, packet type and then the body. Is that right? Yeah. Read byte. So we get the header size, which we know we're already reading. And then we do exactly what we're doing here. Right. And the header reader we leave. It's the encryption like 20. So that tells us whether it's encrypted. And then See you Zorkat, thanks for coming in, mate. 8B is is close. <laughs> no it's No it's not. <laughs> it's not close at all. Actually, hang on a minute. It is actually close if you take off the 32 bytes for the packet header. Nah. Okay. Yeah, okay, so that, what have we got? What does it say? It says 8B. Yeah, so that means that there will be the eight bytes for the type and the length, right? So if we add eight, then we end up with eight B. Okay, that's exactly what it is. So why are we off? Why is it that we have misread something somewhere? Because clearly, like we should, when we call prepare, which is doing the preparation, and then the length, the body length says we wanna get Four bytes from the end. Hmm. Oh, Firefight's here. <laughs> hey, dude. Kieran Mac Gazomo sent us here. Yes. Uh, that's very kind of them to just fire the, fire everybody my way. I hope um, this isn't going to be too boring for you people. But I'm uh, incredibly grateful that people have chimed in and stuck around despite the fact that somebody else has has sent you in my direction. Um, I very much appreciate your company. So thanks for sticking around. Um, <laughs> double the security. Exactly. The more the more ROT 13s you add, the more security that you get at the end. Everybody knows that. That's how it works. Uh, so why is it that this header is incorrect? This type here it looks like the packet type is coming afterwards. Am I just misreading it? Is, the, is it length and then type or type and then length? Because if we did, um, as part of prepare, if we did this um, minus four. Now we know we've already read um, eight bytes off. So we would have to do whatever the body length is minus eight type length value yeah they call them TLVs but it's actually length type then value so yeah maybe I'm just misreading it so let's see what happens when we do this again let's just kill that pipe process off mm. aggressive tunes oh, man right now I take any tune that just doesn't break uh, to kick off the pivots again. Man. Now where do we want to get to? We want to get 
to reading the packet body and stopping here. All right, so body length is still zero. Why is it still zero? I'm doing something wrong, aren't I? There it is there. One, two, three, four. Hmm. Okay, so if we go... We've got another follower. Sandbox, thank you for the follow. Um, this dot header dot buffer. Ah, yeah, yeah, okay. So, yeah, so that should be fine, right? So if we do bit converter dot to uint 32 and we do, is it 20, it's going to be zero. 24 should give us a, aha. Uh -huh. And then we can network to hosts order, yeah? IP address dot network to host order. And we should end up with, whoa. And we should uint that stuff. Ah, oh, therein lies our problem. Okay, so we do actually want to byte swap that. So it should be, we're already in host. Ah, okay, 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 okay. Yeah, look, I think there's definitely something going on with the way that we're reading this body out and it's always um, resulting in null and it's got something to do with that 64-bit extension that someone recently just happened to remind me of. Tom K, I'm sorry, dude. I think I think you were right. I should have just left that as 2 in 32, not 2 in 32. Bitwise, good to see you, mate. Thanks for jumping on. Um... God, I'm gonna have to kill off this ridiculous music because the kill the stuttering is really driving me insane. Let me just try this one more time. Spin up packet pivot. And what have we got here? Alright, so if we do this now, what do we end up? There we go. That's what I wanted. Body length is 8B. Now we actually, the body length includes um, the eight bytes that has already been written for the type and the length. So what should happen here when we try and read from, where are we? Let's clear out these breakpoints. We're gonna get to here, right? So we're going to be asking for 8B bytes, which we're not going to get, right? Yeah, I know, Tom. Don't you look at me like that, my friend. Don't you look at me like that. <laughs> uh, the streaming companion soon, eh? If it wise streams. Yes, yes, that's right. Yeah, I'm sure he's going to do much better than me. Okay, so... Bytes red. How many bytes did we get? 83, which is exactly what we want, right? Because we should be ignoring the first eight bytes. So, what we need to do here, body length, we're going to subtract eight at this point. That's what we want. Another follower, Luke P21. Thank you for the follow very kind. Let's kill that off. Spin up, pivot. Let's 
spin up the pipe. Packet body now should contain a buffer of 8-3. And then when we carry on with our read, we should be able to read 8-3 bytes. And we actually have the full packet now. So now that we've got that full packet, we kind of need to do a little bit of the reverse. Serialize it to a stream and basically pass that entire byte array to the underlying packet deserializer so that we actually have a proper packet, right? Um, so what we'll do is we'll go var packet equals packet body. We'll invoke something called two packet for now. We'll just delegate the responsibility to this public packet to packet. All right. So what we're going to have to do though to begin with, I am going to have to maintain this XOR key. So I'm going to put this back to um, this. Do the same. Oops. Yeah, this XOR key. So what we want. Let's make that a field. Because I want to, I want to store it again, and then we want to do the same in the opposite direction. Um, so unpreparing and preparing is the same thing. So for the sake of, uh, <laughs> I'm going to call it unprepare for now. If I spell it properly, and all I'm going to do is the same as what we did before, but just reverse the exoring process, and then inside to pack it. What we want is a byte array, and we're just going to copy the body and the packet header and then deserialize the packet from that array, right? So we're going to have a new byte array. Thanks for the follow, Bren Brenus and DJ Bexter. I appreciate the support. Um, okay, so this is going to be this.buffer.length plus this.header.buffer.length and then we're just going to do like a straight copy so we'll go array.copy um, we are going to go from this.header.buffer to bytes and the length is going to be this.header.buffer.length so that co copies the unprepared header so before we do that we need to go this dot header dot reverse it and then we're going to have to do a, an array dot copy but this time we'll use an overload to change the offsets so we want to go from this dot buffer zero we want to go to this dot nope we want to go bytes we need to start at um, this dot header dot buffer dot length and the and then length we need to set to this dot buffer dot length. Okay, so now we have this bytes array and we just need to go return new packet and give it the bytes. Now that does mean that we're probably going to need to do an overload here, okay? Which is pretty easy to do. Um, maybe what we need to do is. Oh, did I accidentally close that? Yeah, I did. Named pipe. Is it the pivot? Yeah. We want to give it the bytes, but what we might actually need to do is this. Um, using, <laughs> I should have done this to begin with actually. This would have made it significantly easier. Let's just do this. Uh, using var uh, mem stream equals new memory stream. Okay, and then we'll have to do the same here. Actually, no, we'll do this afterwards. Let's go. Uh, memstream.write and we're just going to copy the arrays over so we'll start with this dot this dot header 
dot buffer. Offset zero, this dot header dot buffer dot length. Okay, we're gonna do the same thing here with the buffer and then we get both. Um, and then what we need to do is go memstream.seek. We're gonna go straight to the beginning. Uh, from the beginning, so we're gonna reset the pointer and then we can reuse that inside a binary reader equals new binary reader. Wrap the memstream in that. And then we can go return new packet and give it the binary reader. At which point it should just magically create the packet out of out of all the magic for us. Does that make sense? Is everyone with me? The music's actually working a bit better now. You watch me speak too soon. Okay, let's see what happens now. Kill that off. Spin up the pivot listener. Spin that up. Let's see what happens. Create a memory stream. Write the header. Write the buffer. Go back to the beginning, create a binary reader. Create a packet. Are we going to end up with a packet? Oh! Yes! We have a packet. Oh my god, it's a packet. Let's have a look. Look at that. It's got the session good in it as well. Yeah! That's exactly what we want. It is core. We've, it's responding to our session GUID. So does that mean we should be able to go um, packet.tlvs. We can see there's a session GUID in it. TLV type dot session GUID, which should be blank, ironically. There you go, it's byte. Byte array, it's probably null. There you go, byte for value. Value as raw. There it is. There it is. That's exactly what we've been looking for. Okay, we've had a win. <laughs> I don't get it, I don't get it either. No, no, no. Well, ironically, um, this packet has taken a very long time to get here, um, but it's still here faster than Australia Post delivers. So uh, I think we should take that as a win. What do you think? <laughs> you were feeling it, Wilbur? Trust me, I, um, I'm pretty happy about that. Now, the problem is that we end up in a situation where I'm still not sure whether or not the full asynchronous nature of this is going to work the way that we want it to. But clearly we have the ability now to read and write, uh, sorry, read packets in an asynchronous fashion. So as soon as we've got a packet, we just need to dispatch it. Um, once we've dispatched the packet, we can just go back into our, our loop, right? All right, so what did we actually do to dispatch a packet? Ah, we need this. That's right. That's what we need. So we need to do this magic here. Get rid of the commentary. Okay, so now the session GUID from memory, um, if it's blank, we then need to create a session GUID effectively um, because we need to basically hijack the, um, be because we're the middleman, we need to create a session GUID. We need to tell the other end that we've got a session GUID for them. And then we need to tell Metasploit that we've got a session with a certain session GUID. Um, so we would need to have a look at the native implementation to make sure that we're doing the right thing. Um, but anyway, we are at the point now where we can legitimately read and write packets to and from. And we can see that it did actually stage and things are, are doing what we want. You can see it's trying to reconnect because of the resilient transports. 
so we could actually spin this back up again and, and see it come in. Um, doesn't actually have a session GUID yet. See here, where are we? Where are we? Session. Each packet should be sent with the GUID, and the GUID should be listed somewhere in this debug out. But I'm not going to worry about it just now. <coughs> Anyway, so I have to finish it off there. I've got some stuff I really need to do before I head to bed. Um, look, I'm super grateful. I'm just going to do the horrible thing and zoom in on my face because I know you guys love it. Um, it has been five or six weeks since we last did a stream. And uh, I'm sorry about that. I know a bunch of people have been harassing me and workload has been intense, which is why I haven't done it. But I'm glad to be back in the saddle. Hello, Rickus. How are you going? You just started learning code, but the fundamentals are hard to understand. Yeah, they absolutely are. Um, are you just learning to code just in general, or have you got a, a language in particular that you are looking to get involved in? Um, I'd highly recommend jumping on Discord with the crew that's currently on chat and just talking shit, talking code, trying to learn Python. There are a lot of Pythonistas around. So... Um, you know, there is, uh, if you hit bang Discord in the chat, it'll give you a link to the Discord server and there's a bunch of nerds that love to talk about things. So yeah, so jump in on that and um, we'd be happy to help you learn, man, even if it's Python. <laughs> so yeah, okay, so here we are. We're at a point now where um, we're at the point where packets can come in from our SMB pivot. We're able to pull them apart at least enough regardless of whether they're encrypted or not. We can evaluate them, turn them into a packet that we can parse if they're intended for us to consume in the middle. Next, we're gonna tell Metasploit that we've got a new pivoted session. We have to do a bit of a session GUID handshake, and we have to make sure that we keep track of our pivot points based on those session GUIDs, so that when packets come out of Metasploit, we can examine the header and we can say, hey, this session GUID is actually associated with one of the pivot sessions. And so we need to send that packet back down the wire um, and basically just use ourselves as a proxy. Does that make sense? That's what I do. Uh, Rickus, no, I, well, I'm a, I'm a bit of a general programming nerd and I have strong opinions on various things. But um, myself and a lot of the people who are in that Discord channel are uh, very happy to help anyone learn um, even if we're not experts in the thing that you're learning, there's a bunch of people with experience that can help sort of shed light to eventually find solutions for you. So look, you know, highly recommend getting in there and just chatting. Pretty young, so a lot of people kind of shut me down. That's all right, man. Like, or, to be honest, a lot of the time we don't, um, we don't jump on voice. Um, it's just text. But, you know, if you want to jump on voice and you want to ask questions, hey, look, I started writing software when I was seven years old. And I'm a lot older than seven years old. Um, I can assure you that I personally would not shut you down because you're 14. I will very much encourage you in any way that I can because I think it's great that young people are getting stuck into coding. So, yeah. Yeah, I know, seven. It's a long story. I'll fill you in maybe at, at another time. But seriously, like, please jump in. And, um, and if anyone smacks you down because you're 14, then tell me. Um, and I will make sure that they're promptly removed because that is not the vibe that we have going on in this uh, in this Discord server at all. It's all about learning, regardless of your age, your gender, um, your race. None of those things matter. What matters is that you're a nice person and that you want to learn. So you're more than welcome to join in if that's what you would like to do. Thank you, Dean Welch, for the follow, and thank you, Rickus, for the follow. Yeah, yeah, please do, please do. But on that note, I am going to finish up. I'm going to push all this stuff up to the internet so people can view it at their leisure. And let's aim to do this again um, probably in six days. We're going to aim for Tuesday next week to get back in. And hopefully, we'll be at a point where we can actually really um, pivot packets properly. Uh, and we can start refactoring the mess that we created tonight um, into a, a, a some kind of structure that makes a little bit more sense. So... In the meantime, if you have any questions, jump on the Discord. Thanks again to everybody who's followed, everyone who's subbed, everyone who supports me and all the things that I do. Very much appreciate it. You're all awesome. Thanks for your patience. And uh, I will see you next time. As always, be good to each other. See ya.